Hey everybody, welcome again to yet another one of my videos. In this video I will be going over graphing systems of inequalities. Um, so here we have a system of inequalities. We have y is greater than or equal to 1 half x minus 1 in blue. And we also have y is less than 3x plus 1 in green. And many people get intimidated when they have to graph a system of inequalities like this, but it's actually not that bad. And the first step in graphing a system of inequalities is you want to graph both inequalities just like you would a normal line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in an x value and get my corresponding y value and plot those points just like I would a normal line. So we'll start with the first inequality y is greater than or equal to 1 half x minus 1. And I'm just going to pick an easy x value and find my corresponding y value. So I'll pick an x value of 0 uh, just to see what my y value is. So if I plug in a 0 for x, I get 1 half times 0 minus 1. 1 half times 0 is just 0. Uh, 0 minus 1 is negative 1. So when my x is equal to 0, my y is going to be equal to negative 1. So now I'm going to plot this point on my graph, 0, negative 1. And in order to make a line, you need two points. So now I'm going to pick another x value and find my corresponding y value. Um, so now I'm going to pick an x value of 2, just so when I multiply by the fraction, I get a whole number. Um, so I'm going to find my corresponding y value when x is equal to 2. So y is equal to 1 half. I'm going to plug in 2 for x minus 1. 1 half times 2 is just 1. 1 minus 1 is equal to 0. So when we have a x value of 2, our y value is going to be 0. So now I'm going to plot this point on my graph. I'm going to go to the right 2 and our y value is 0. So now that I have my two points, I can connect my dots and make my line. However, we have to remember that we're plotting an inequality and not just a normal line. And the difference between plotting an inequality and a normal line is anytime there's an equal sign underneath the symbol, it's always going to be a solid line. If there is no equal sign underneath the inequality symbol, then, it, then it's going to be a dashed line. So that's the one important thing you have to remember when making your line for the inequality. So now I'm going to connect my two points. And once again, because there is an equal sign underneath the greater than symbol, my line after I connect the two points is going to be solid. So now let's do the same thing for our inequality y is less than 3x plus 1 in green. So I'm going to plot this inequality just like I would a normal equation. So I'm going to plug in some x values and I'm going to find out what my y values are. So I'm just going to pick an easy x value. I'll pick an x value of 0 and find out what my y value is going to be. So if I plug in 0 for x, I get y equals 3 times 0 plus 1. 3 times 0 is just 0. 0 plus 1 is just positive 1. So when I have an x value of 0, my y value is going to be positive 1. I'll plot this point on my graph, 0, 1. And once again, we need two points to make a line. So I'm going to do this for one more point. So I'm going to, I'm going to plug in another easy x value so the multiplication is easy and I can do it in my head. I'm going to plug in an x value of 1 and find out what my y value is going to be. So if I plug in an x value of 1, I get y equals 3 times 1 plus 1. 3 times 1 is just 3. 3 plus 1 is equal to 4. So when I plug in an x value of 1, I get a corresponding y value of 4. So I'm going to plot my point 1, 4 on my graph. I'm going to go to the right 1 and go up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Now I'm going to connect my two points and make my line. 
And one thing that you have to remember to do for inequalities is remember and check if you need to make a solid line or a dashed line. Because there is no equal sign underneath the less than symbol, this is going to be a dashed line. So don't forget to do that. It's a very easy mistake to make. Always make sure to check if you need to make a solid or dashed line. So now I have plotted my dashed line for the inequality y is less than 3x plus 1. So our next step is we have to figure out which area makes both inequalities true. Once again, our next step is we have to figure out which area makes both inequalities true. Um, so notice we have four areas. We have one area at the bottom here, and I'll color it in for you. I'll call this area 1. Uh, we have another area in between the two lines. Right here, I'll color it in for you. I'll call that area 2. We have another area here to the left of the two lines. We'll call this area 3. And we have another area here in between the two lines. I'll call this area 4. So what we have to do is we have to figure out which one of these four areas makes both inequalities true. So I'm just going to start with area number one. You can pick any area, and I'm going to test and see if it makes both inequalities true. So the way you test an area to see if it makes both inequalities true is you pick any point that is in the area that's not touching any of the two lines. So I'll pick a nice point that's not touching any of the two lines in this area. I'll just pick the point 0, negative 5. 0, negative 5 is certainly in area number 1, and it's not touching any of the two lines. So I'm going to test this point and see if area number 1 makes both inequalities true. So we have an x value of 0, and we have a y value of negative 5. So I'm going to plug those into my inequalities and see if it makes both inequalities true. So first I'll plug in my negative 5 in for y in my first inequality. So we have negative 5 is greater than or equal to 1 half x, and our x is 0 minus 1. And this inequality simplifies. The left-hand side stays the same. Our negative 5 is greater than or equal to 1 half times 0 is 0. And 0 minus 1 is negative 1. So this inequality simplifies to negative 5 is greater than or equal to negative 1. So many of you can see that negative 5 is certainly not greater than or equal to negative 1. That is not true. And because this point makes either one of these inequalities not true, then area number one is not in our solution. So now let's do the same exact thing and test out our area number two. And one point that certainly seems to be in area number two is the point one, one. So I'm going to use my point one, one as my test point for area number two. So I have an x value of 1, and I also have a y value of 1. So I'm going to plug those into my inequalities and see if it makes both of them true. So we have y is greater than or equal to 1 half x minus 1. I'm going to plug in my 1 for y is greater than or equal to 1 half x. And once again, my x value is also 1, so I'm going to plug in a 1 for x minus 1. And if you simplify this inequality, the left-hand side stays the same. You get 1 is greater than or equal to 1 half times 1, which is just 1 half. 1 half minus 1 is just negative 1 half. And 1 is certainly greater than or equal to negative 1 half. So that point makes the first inequality true, so that's good. Now I'm going to do the same thing and test if it makes my second inequality true. So our y value equals 1, so I'm going to plug in my 1 for y is less than 3x 
Once again, our x value is also 1, so I'm going to plug in my 1 for x plus 1. And if you simplify this inequality, the left-hand side stays the same. And you get 1 is less than. And the right-hand side is just 3 times 1, which is 3. 3 plus 1 is 4. And 1 is certainly less than 4, so our point 1, 1 definitely makes both our inequalities true. And because the point 1, 1 made both inequalities true, every point in the area 2 is part of our solution. So that means we have to shade in all the points in area 2. So once you figure out which area makes both inequalities true, you can just stop because all the other areas aren't going to work. They're going to make one of the inequalities not true. So here we have our final answer. This is our final graph. I would like to go over one more example that seems to be a little tricky for a lot of students. So let's go over one more example.